Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. We are at episode 10 of the Daikin VRVS install series. Today we're going to be focused on forced fan on. A lot of episodes in this series, I realize this, but it's intentional. I want to give you guys consolidated bits of information for each of these different topics because when you're out there in the field, you're installing a piece of equipment, you're trying to fire it off. I don't want you to have to sit through an hour long video through 18 different topics to try to find that one piece of information that you need. So in the last video, we focused on powering up the equipment, going through the initial communications check, verifying that the outdoor unit is communicating with all the indoors. Today, we're gonna to be focused on forced fan on, a troubleshooting feature built into the outdoor unit that allows you to very easily and very quickly determine which indoor units are not communicating with the outdoor unit during that fire off process, should you have a power issue, wiring issue, uh, whatever have you. It's an easy way to figure out which ones aren't communicating so you can then go figure out what's wrong with them. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, let's jump right in. So as always, I must give you guys the weekly episode disclaimer. This is not a factory authorized class. This is not a training of any kind. This is just me giving you information based on my experience, taking tidbits from the installation and operation manuals and bringing you discussions that happen in classes when I'm actually doing classes in person with other contractors. So don't take anything I say as fact. Always read your installation and operation manuals, RTF. FM. You guys know this. Don't throw away those books. They are gold. All the information you need is in those books. So today it's just giving you guys some information, meat and potatoes, step by step, quickly, just as a reference point, as a supplement to those installation and operation manuals. So let's go ahead and let's pull up the whiteboard and start talking about how to turn on forced fan on. So what you guys are going to want to do with forced fan is always start from an outdoor unit main screen. You know it's the main screen because H3P is the only light on. We've talked about this in multiple episodes now. And what you're going to do is you're going to be changing a setting in the outdoor unit, which means you need to go to service mode, the service menu where you're changing things. So in order to do that from H3P being the only light on, you're going to press and hold the mode button on the outdoor unit. You're going to press and hold the mode button until H1P is solid. That tells you you're in service mode. Now what you're gonna do is go to setting number five. You're gonna press that set button five times and you know you've pressed the set button the correct number of times because H5P will be on and H7P will be on, which indicates a value of one and four. One plus four equals five. So you should have H1P on and solid because it tells you you're in service mode. H5P and H7P, four plus one equals five. If you get to that point, you're good. Press the return button to go in to setting five. Now, if you accidentally go past this, just hit the mode button once to escape back to an H3P main screen and repeat the process. When you hit return to go into setting five, it's going to give you the current option. The current option is off. So 7P will be blinking. You'll still have H1P on and solid for now. Just ignore that light. That light's just telling you that you're still in service mode. That's fine. We know we're in the service menu. H7P will be blinking. That is a value of one, which tells you it's off or disabled. What you need to do is turn it on. You need to enable forced fan. So you hit the set button to toggle through all your options. And in this case, your options are only option one or option two. So H7P will move to H6P because H6P is a value of two when you press the set button that one time. Now with H6P blinking, hit the return button one time. That's your enter button. You're going to press that to save the setting. And now H6P will go from a blinking light to a solid light. 
But as we've discussed in past videos, you have to activate that setting. And this is the one step that everybody always misses. You have to hit the return button one more time and then H1P will be the only light on. That activates the setting and takes you back to the beginning of your service menu. So now with H1P solid on all by itself, the beginning of service menu, you're going to walk around the job site and you're going to look at all the indoor units. The first one's blowing the fan, great. That's communicating. Oh, the second one's blowing the fan, great. That one's communicating. Oh, look, the third one's not blowing the fan. That is one of my indoor units that's not communicating. In the last video or in many videos, we've used the example where we have six indoor units physically installed and the outdoor unit only sees four of them. In the last video we did where we counted the indoor units, we verified communication, the outdoor unit told us it only sees four. So we know we're missing two. So we need to go check the other three now in this example to see which one isn't operating the fan. So we do that, we determine that the third unit and the fifth unit were not operating their fans. So either those two units did not have power or they were wired incorrectly. And we don't know what the issue is. We just used this troubleshooting feature to determine what two units weren't communicating. And then once you determine which ones aren't communicating, all you have to do with the outdoor unit is simply press the mode button one time to escape back to H3P and the VRVS system will automatically turn off forced fan. So you don't have to go back in and disable it and then save and activate and then escape. It's very, very handy. You just hit mode once, it escapes automatically automatically and turns off forced fan. And then at that point, kill power to the outdoor unit, go fix the two indoor units, whatever the issue was. And then when you are done, come back to the outdoor unit, power the outdoor unit back up. And now what you need to do is you need to reset your addressing. And so as soon as you power up the outdoor unit, you're going to hold the reset button for 20 seconds. When I power up the outdoor unit and I see the lights blinking, I know it's going through initialize, I press and hold reset for 20 seconds and I just time it on my watch and then let go. Nothing changes on screen in this one particular case. That's why you have to time it. The system will go through its initialization just as it would any other day of the week, but this time it redid its addressing because you added units, you added two units in this example to the communication network. Anytime you add or remove indoor units to the communication network, you have to reset the addressing from the outdoor unit. So once that process completes, the outdoor unit initializes, it goes back to H3P, you're at your main screen. Now you need to go back to the video we did here just in the last video and you need to recount your indoor units. Mode once to go into monitor mode, set five times to go to setting five, return once. And hopefully this time H5P and H6P, a value of four and a value of two equals six, are blinking on your display indicating that yes, you did correct the issue. Now most of the time your issue is going to be power related as in when you went around, you were supposed to verify power on all the stats. You did not do this. And there was one room or two rooms. Maybe you didn't have access to whatever the case may be. Those are probably the units that didn't have power. The other most common issue is communication wiring. You didn't land your communication wiring correctly on F1, F2 of each of your indoor units. Maybe you starred, maybe you branched. You didn't do a daisy chain like we talked about in like the third video of the series. You have to have a smooth daisy chain from outdoor to indoor to indoor to indoor and be done. You can't go from outdoor to the first indoor and then from the first to the second and from the first to the third. That's a star. You can't star. You got to have a smooth daisy chain. Or maybe you ran stat wire and you got a broken wire somewhere. You're supposed to run stranded cable. You didn't run stranded cable. So communication wiring related or power related, those are the two most common problems. And every now and then there's a loose expansion valve. The little wiring harness came loose, usually on the FXTQ air handlers, especially if you had to pull the coil out, flip it in a downflow configuration, you have to undo that wiring harness. Guys don't always put those wiring harnesses back together properly because they're either reefing on them, no offense, but you guys do, or you're just not being careful or you forgot you missed it. It's not a big deal, it's an easy fix, but usually it's communication wiring related or power related. So you guys, that is it for today. Uh, we've gone through and we've verified our communication is correct at this point. And so the next step is going to be running the system through 
test operation. So in the next video, keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm going to be walking you through the process of performing the test operation on a Daikin VRVS. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And of course, as always, if you have not already, please consider subscribing. You guys, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. As I've stated in multiple episodes, we're one big happy family. We're just trying to learn this material. You guys are all my sponges. There are no bad questions. If you're thinking something, it's very, very possible somebody else is thinking the same thing. So put your questions in the comments below. I read all of your guys' comments and I'll do my best to answer them all as well. You guys, thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you have an awesome day.